Good morning. Welcome to Bible School, In Christ International Bible School, yeah. and uh, live stream Facebook Bible School. And uh, you can also get it on uh, Instagram and also on YouTube. And so uh, we're having a wonderful time studying the Word of God every morning, Monday through Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we're here in Houston, Texas. <laughs> we're in Houston, Texas yesterday, today, and tomorrow morning because we preached last night at Houston Faith Church in Houston, Texas. So if you're in the Houston, Texas area, come to Houston Faith Church tonight. It's the last night at 7 o'clock tonight. tonight. You can also watch it online. Yeah. And last night we had an amazing time. It was glorious. And we've got our friends here, uh, Patrick and Dee Patrick and Dee. Here, and uh, Stan and Mary Pody. Stan and Mary. A lot of uh, different pastors. Joey, Joey Hamlin, yes. his wife. So, Jay and, uh, Griner, Jay Griner, his wife. And, and Bob and Candy. And him. my brother Bobby and Candy. And Faith. These are all pastors. And then also my sister Faith came. And um, uh, I, don't want to, I don't want to miss anybody. And um, uh, wow. All right. I might be missing somebody. I'm trying to catch it. <laughs> yeah, we'll get it. Um, let's see. Um, so it was wonderful. Pastor we, Jack Pigeon. Pigeon, that's yeah, who it they is. Have yes. a, they have a great church in this area, and we're yeah. at Pastor Chaz and Johnny Stevenson's church. And we have had a wonderful, they have a brand new building. It's a beautiful building. It was absolutely looked impossible, mm -hmm. but the Lord provided for them, and they bought 17 acres of land right in the middle of Houston, cost them over $5 million. Then they built a beautiful building it's gorgeous. on it. Gorgeous, second wow. to none. And uh, right in the <laughs> middle of all of this situation right. of the virus stuff, um, they never have closed their doors. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so they're, now they're doing their grand opening. And so Sunday night, wonderful time. And then last night on uh, the blessing of the Lord. It was wonderful. It was amazing. The Holy we Spirit. entered a place in God and in the Spirit, in the Word. Yeah. And together, it was such an outpouring and a tangible anointing of the Holy Spirit. And uh, laid hands on a lot of people yeah. for an impartation of yeah. The glory of God. It was powerful. Yeah, and, and the blessing of the, the Lord. Blessing. And a fresh the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It was just amazing. And thank God for the anointing yes. of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Amazing service last night. So tonight's the last night. So if you're in the Houston, Texas area, if you can drive a little ways, mm -hmm. come on over because Pastor Stan Mary Pody drove from Ruston and uh, Pastor Joey Hamlin and his wife drove from Post, Texas. So, uh, you might want to drive a little ways on. and come out tonight because uh, you're not able to have church everywhere and we're not in the parking lot. We're inside the building. And having a great time. And we like to say one thing about Texas. I was born in Texas. <laughs> Raised in Texas. I was born in Crockett, Texas. And, That's uh, the first capital of Texas. Yeah. Right? And so the Republic of Texas. Yes. So in the state of Texas. And so... Uh, Wow, think about Texas taking the leadership and reopening the state and reopening the churches and the businesses. And wow, it's just a, a wonderful leadership in the state of Texas. Yeah, we just speak blessing over this state, the governor yeah. and all the leadership. And we ask God to bless the people mm -hmm. with health and life and strength and wisdom. Yeah. And we believe there's a fresh hunger for God. Yes across this whole state and across the whole United States and the world. Yes. Well, and so this is a new time, a new season. A revelation. And what the enemy, <laughs> that devil meant for evil, God turning around for our good. We believe that the Holy Spirit said last night that the nation, the economy of the United States of America would spring back quickly and the blessing of the Lord, Amen. and God will restore the things that the enemy messed up. And so I declare that in your life personally, I declare that in our nation, that uh, we plead the blood of Jesus over President Trump, his wife, family, Vice President Pence, and the leaders in America, and over our economy, that we are the greatest distribution of the gospel of Jesus Christ in the world, America. And so the enemy would like to attack and stop our nation, the freedoms that we have because of the distribution of the gospel of Christ. But the church must stand up in this hour and boldly declare not only the word of God, but according to our constitution, uh, we have the right to assemble and to worship God. 
We should never be just comfortable in the society that we live in and adapt to the surroundings that we're in. Yeah. We are we are a different kingdom. We're the kingdom of God. Yeah, and people we have a lot of from heaven. A lot of fears right now, but we got faith in God. We do. Faith in the blood of Jesus, faith in the word of God, and faith in the name of Jesus. So we live by faith anyhow, and so we are this is the victory that overcomes the world, even we're our faith. See, we've seen people healed. People raised up, you know. Yes. And this gospel. <laughs> and people heal the coronavirus right, right in the middle of it, just right. uh, by the power of God. And, and mm -hmm. uh, one of them heard me laughing, and he started laughing, and he came out of uh, intensive care healed. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some people don't like the, the <laughs> services where people get happy and get full of joy. But if you get healed, I'm sure you like it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so this week, we are studying. Uh, this book here called Revolutionary Revelation, Revolutionary Revelation, and this is a book on the the uh, study of the Apostle Paul's prayers, are on the Ephesians one prayer and the Ephesians three prayer, and so this book comes in two different covers. So I'm not sure which one you will get, but this one has a jet breaking like the one. sound barrier. This is my favorite one, and so uh, <laughs> this was uh, we talked about Chuck Yeager, first man to break the sound barrier yesterday. So you can get this book, Revolutionary Revelation, just different covers, it's the same, same book. inside, right? <laughs> and so this book. Um, Oh, we wrote is, it, but it's so powerful. Oh, man. I mean, it was just so much of the word in there. And so we uh, are giving it to you free. So the book Revolutionary Revelation is free. All you have to do is get on markhankins.org. Get on the website. It'll pop up exactly where and how. Just say, I want the Revolutionary Revelation book. And uh, our office will send it to you really fast. Uh, absolutely free, no charge whatsoever. You can also get on markhankins.org and, and uh, have free, free, absolutely free, unlimited digital downloads. So you can download the messages on revolutionary revelation or what happened in Christ. And so we're going to study that this week, all week long on uh, revolutionary revelation. Every breakthrough in faith comes from a breakthrough in the knowledge of the word of God. Revolutionary means it produces a radical change. It is a revolutionary revelation of the Word of God and what God has done for us in Christ, the power of the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, and just simply the light of the Word of God. I like one of the ways you say revolution means it's a change of government. It's an overthrow. It's a change. Yeah. So instead of being governed by your circumstances, governed by your mind, what you see your feelings, and your feelings, your senses, up and down, yeah. what others say, Other you're people's governed opinion. by this, the Lord who's on the inside. Yeah. The kingdom of God is governing yeah. us. So in Christ and by the blood of Jesus and by the power of the redemption that we have in Christ, we have a revolutionary revelation. <laughs> a complete change, a complete overthrow. An overthrow of what used to govern That's and right. rule our lives, that now Jesus is our Lord and we are redeemed in Christ. So that's where our victory is. And so we're studying this all week long. So if you missed yesterday, go back on the files there on Mark Hankins Ministries Facebook or go to Instagram or go to uh, YouTube and watch it again. So, uh, or for the first time, anyway, it's playing there. And also, you can um, uh, make a comment if you're watching and say if you like the program and uh, if it's a blessing to you. And then uh, put a quick comment about where you're from, what state you're from or what country or what nation you're from. Because we have many people watching in many different countries. And so it's our desire just to bring the Word of God to you, be a blessing to you right now, especially in this time. And one of our greatest joys is just to open the Bible and study the Word. It's like when you open it up, light comes out. You can hear His voice. It just mm -hmm. comes alive, almost lifts off the page mm -hmm. and comes into you. When wow. you're hungry and you're thirsty for it, God will meet you yeah. and He sends His Word. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And He, he never sent does, His Word. Yeah, and there's no stop sign in the <laughs> revelation of God saying, you, you've come this far, you don't need mm -hmm. to know anymore. And there's yeah. not a limit on who can understand the word. A child 
can understand maybe the better things of God <laughs> even better Jesus said you got to be like a child if you want God to give you revelation or knowledge or wisdom he said will you humble yourself mm -hmm. and allow God to teach you his way of thinking and his way of doing things that's right amen so we're studying revolutionary revelation mm -hmm. and so we want you to turn your Bible to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 is where we want to get started Good. but there's so much that we're going to study on mm -hmm. on how you receive the word of God and how and its effect upon you and how you receive the word will determine how you receive what the word promises you. You know, yesterday we talked about the woman who heard about Jesus mm -hmm. and she had been sick for 12 years, shut away in her house, she gave up on life, she gave up on being well or ever returning back to her normal life. But she heard something about Jesus. Hallelujah, and that's the point where revelation knowledge began because yeah. revelation, it's not a revelation of you know just anything, it's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And in Matthew, the 16th chapter, he said, upon this rock, he spoke to Peter, this revelation of who I am and who mm, you are, wow. it will change everything. And it is the foundation that the whole church mm. is built on. And the gates of hell wow. itself cannot Shall prevail. Shall not prevail against the up. church. Amen. <laughs> so this is a big deal, the revelation. And so the of kingdom Jesus. of God is yes. built on revelation knowledge. Right of who Jesus is and what he has done for us and who we are in him. Mm -hmm. The whole kingdom of God is built on revelation knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so the word of God and the revelation of Christ and the revelation of God's way of thinking and talking, wow, that revelation, the whole kingdom of God is built on. So there is a difference between uh, information mm -hmm. and revelation. Or there's a difference between the fact and the truth. Now, here's the difference. Uh, in our world today, I was just watching a video that was before the uh, hearings in the, in the Senate, how that um, uh, the information can be manipulated to control how people think. And so that certain big... Uh, corporations that control technology and information, how people receive information, can, can uh, delete or edit or control the information mm -hmm. because that will control people's opinions, their minds, and their thoughts. And so really in, in the world, Satan desires to control the information that you live on. Mm -hmm. He does. And so uh, we, we call that actually... Uh, uh, Ann Adcock's on our board. She's watching right now. And um, uh, she called it information warfare. Interesting. Uh, That's so in a, so in a government. And so you can see even other nations, maybe uh, uh, other countries, how they control the people through information warfare. So the media, what's being said, mm -hmm. how it controls people's uh, fears, their thoughts, their life, just by information. But in the middle of all this information, there is another kind of knowledge which is revelation knowledge that comes from the word of God. And that word never changes. And that revelation of the gospel of Christ literally is the power of God in the midst of all kinds of information. It is truth. And, you know, I listen to voices and there's a lot of watering down and trying to fit into society and yeah, everything. Yeah. But that's, it's time to open up the Bible. Manipulating say, information. Yeah. Jesus, he said, I am the truth. The, the way Holy the truth Spirit is, is yeah. called the spirit of truth. Yeah. And the word of God, your word it's is true. true. So we're not looking just for facts or information. My dad used to say something like this because I, I use the illustration. My dad didn't buy a new car very often, maybe every five years or something. So my dad, he, he would say uh, some salesman or something, or he built some church buildings and somebody would come out and they say, well, here's the figures. And yeah. the figures don't lie. My daddy said, I know the figures don't lie, but liars figure. figure. <laughs> so sometimes the liar that gave you the figures. And so the, the point is what information you're receiving. Check and it out. 
<laughs> and make sure you have the correct information that you're not just living by information right. from sense knowledge, from what you see and feel and taste and touch and smell. You're not just living by that kind of information. Mm -hmm. You're living by a higher level of information, which is holy information, mm -hmm. which is revelation knowledge, the most powerful information in the world is the revelation of what God has done for us in Christ, the revelation of the word of God. And uh, the psalmist David said, the entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding unto the simple. That means the moment the light of the word comes in, that's a whole new kind of information. That's right. You know, in Second Corinthians, I think it's a fourth chapter, uh, Paul says the God of this world has blinded the minds uh -huh. of the, those who could hear the gospel oh, they so don't they, won't, receive, they the won't receive it and I see that happening there is a spirit in this world I remember back in communistic times in Russia the nation of Russia and um, how that they were manipulated by propaganda yeah. or North Korea you see it mm -hmm. or Cuba different nations manipulated by the news that they heard or the government, and it was illegal. And you can control to say anything different. You can control people if you can control the information mm -hmm. that they make their decisions on. And all those governments are really uh, controlled by an unseen government, mm -hmm. by principalities, powers. You know, Paul talks about wow. it in uh, Ephesians six. Uh, rulers of the darkness yeah. of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. They control the minds. So if Satan can control yes. the information you have received, then he can control your mind, control your decisions, control your life. So we need a breakthrough yeah. in revelation knowledge. And the most powerful information in the world, I like to say this information will change a nation. Yes. The most powerful information in the world the is the gospel of Jesus Christ, yes. which really comes from revelation. So there's two kinds of knowledge, what we call sense knowledge that comes from through your senses, what you can see and feel and taste, touch, smell. And so that's where you gather information. But there's another kind of knowledge that Jesus told Peter, said, uh, flesh and blood, no man, nobody told you this. My father revealed this to you, <laughs> that Jesus, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, and that revelation of Christ is how we are saved. Whew. Lord, I want more revelation of Jesus. And we want to see the Word we of God see. and see the Bible in the light of <coughs> redemption mm -hmm. or in the light of what happened on the cross, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ, and that Jesus is coming back and Jesus is coming soon. We're living in the last days and we're redeemed by the blood and we're not going to leave. Come on, we're not leaving this place um, defeated. Uh, limping, broke up. No, we are the triumphant church, glorious church, and man, we're leaving this place with a shout Strong. full of the Holy Ghost, full of joy. You ought to shout where you're at because we're not of this world. Our citizenship is in no, heaven. No. Jesus is Lord, and we live by revelation knowledge. I like that. Wow. Praise God. It sets us apart. We're a kingdom of God. We're a kingdom that cannot be shaken and is increasing and mm -hmm. changing things. All right, so let's so look at the Ephesians 1 prayer us. real quickly here. Ephesians 1 verse 17, and this is a prayer by the Apostle Paul, but it's really a prayer inspired by the Holy Spirit on how a born-again Christian, a believer, or even a spirit-filled believer, what would be the greatest um, ingredients, desires in your prayers? And so Paul said, here's how I'm praying. And here's how I encourage you to pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, this is Ephesians 1.17, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now that's a different kind of knowledge, mm -hmm. to know God, mm -hmm. to know his thoughts and to know his ways. Mm -hmm. And so he says, I'm praying that God would give unto you the spirit of wisdom mm -hmm. and revelation. Mm -hmm. In other words, this spirit of wisdom and revelation is more than just gathering more information. This is really something that God himself desires to and wants to unlock and show us uh, the revelation of, of what he knows, his knowledge, mm -hmm. and what he's done for us in Christ. Mm -hmm. So he goes right from uh, 
I'm praying for you. In other words, years ago, the Lord said to me, he said, did you ever notice I was not praying for your dedication? Now, dedication is very important, so I don't try to minimize that at all because we must be dedicated. But uh, Paul said, this number one prayer for you is that you would receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So the Lord said to me, your revelation will control your dedication. Fuel it. In other words, it will fuel your dedication. Mm -hmm. So once you get revelation of Jesus, which the apostle Paul on the road to Damascus said, Lord, who are you? And two, what do you want me to do? And both of those things come by revelation. Right. And so Paul said that in Galatians 1 verse 12, he said, the gospel I received, I did not receive it from man. It is not after man. He said, I received it by revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, one translation says, this message, this gospel is not a man-made thing. I didn't receive it from man. I got it by revelation. And so Paul is saying, I'm praying for you that you will receive the word of God and live in the light of what Jesus has done for us. So Paul had such an experience. He was caught up into the third heaven. Is that, where is that found? First Corinthians uh, first, 12. Uh, second Corinthians second, 12. 12. And um, he saw things that were amazing and he saw the plan of God mm -hmm. it, from the beginning to the end. He saw the, the purpose, end, the eternal the purpose. purpose. In Christ. That was a huge revelation. Well, he came back to the earth, you know, and in his place in the mm -hmm. king in the church. But he knew that that revelation yeah. was not just for him. He knew that revelation was for the entire body of Christ. The whole world. The, the world. gospel of Christ. Every nation. This information. And we preach in many countries. In, in, in Vietnam. In uh uh, Papua New Guinea. We preached in. Um, oh, you want to start naming? I, I don't know. Y'all got me <laughs> a list. In Australia. Uh, from from Vietnam to Hong Kong to Nepal. All over South uh, America. Meetings in Nepal and all of South America and, and uh, Europe and Asia. But we preached in Africa. We preached in a lot of countries. So that we were there in any in the country teaching the gospel. And the Lord said to me, "This information will change this nation." In other words, the power of the gospel of Christ, once the church and believers and leaders see what the blood of Jesus has done, who they are in Christ, the authority that they have, wow, he said, it will begin to change cities and churches and um, communities, villages, and uh, the whole nation. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when Paul said, I'm praying for you, amen, and this is the prayer Powerful. that Dad Hagen told us to pray, he said, at least once a day. Mm -hmm. And I know many people have heard me t teach on this and have never done it. But Dad Hagen said, pray this prayer at least once a day. He said, preferably more than that, but at least once a day. And he said, and don't miss a day. So when I was 17 years old, I heard him say that. And I said, that's exactly what I'm going to do. He said, pray that prayer every day. So I wrote it down on a card and the King James on one side, amplified on the back side, and I began to pray it. I carried it in my back pocket. And back in those days, I was 19 and 70, uh, around that time, 70, 70, I had a big Afro hairdo, had bell bottom blue jeans, so cool. patches on them, big collar <laughs> shirt. And, uh, but I was born again. Yeah. And so I carried that card in the back. And I said, Jesus is my Lord, Father God, you're my Father. I'm asking you that you would give unto me. Isn't that interesting? That actually you need to ask for it. Give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Wow, now think about this quote because I got this. Now, I know we haven't finished the prayer yet, but hold steady. And here, here is a quote from Albert Einstein. Brilliant. Man, and so Albert Einstein, uh, his theory of relativity and, and the, his influence upon um, uh, really our whole education system. And Albert Einstein said this. He said, I want to know how God created the world. <laughs> he said, I am not interested in this or that phenomenon, in the spectrum of this or that element. I want to know God's thoughts all the rest are just details. Interesting. Interesting. He had a hunger for God. And so he said, I want to know how God thinks, how God works. He said, I want to know his thoughts. 
I want to too. So when you're <laughs> hungry, but think about the kind of information that Invest that sometimes. Today. Uh, people are, end up chasing. Yes. They're only chasing uh, uh, Facebook information or people's information, and and they'll end up on somebody's lost cousin somewhere and see <laughs> pictures of somebody, and they'll they're, and they're chasing all day. kinds of information. Oh. And I know if I go buy a car or truck, bam, I go into the information and uh, I start studying what kind of truck and you know if that's a good one, that's not a good one. And so, man, you and then you go to the news, and then you get all the information coming in from the news, and a lot of that is determined by who wants to put what articles on. The news sure. so you're gathering information but are you really uh, gathering the truth is real revelation knowledge from the Word of God dominating your decisions your feelings your mind or are you just gathering all kinds of trivial information and so Einstein said I want to know God I want to know his thoughts and I want to know his ways how did he create the world <laughs> and believe it or not, God wants you to know him. <laughs> and God wants you to know his way. God delights in revealing himself to people who are hungry and people that are sincere. So this prayer is a prayer of spiritual hunger, sincerely prayed yes. by a believer. And so I prayed that prayer every day. He said at least six months. I went longer than six months. He said the first thing that'll happen if you'll pray this prayer diligently, mm -hmm. he said first thing is the Bible will become a different book to you. Hmm. And he said, and life will become different for you. In other words, for life to be different for you, the word of God, you must see and know and live in the light of God's thoughts and God's ways. And he said it will change your life. So at 17 years old, I can remember clearly when the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the way I read the word and saw the word just came alive to me. The simplicity, nothing complex, just the simplicity of the word of God and the Holy Spirit began to show me. Wow, think about that. And it began to change my life. Change your life. And this prayer became part of your life. Mm -hmm. I remember when I met Mark at college, and, uh, you know, that's what he talked about. Let's pray we, that prayer. All of our dates, uh, yeah. we wanted to go out and we brought the Bible. Yeah. And so we would pray we that went to prayer. Church. And I remember distinctly the first time I prayed that from my heart. Hmm. And instead of just praying it, you know, that's, that's a place in the Bible, Ephesians 1. I took where it says you and I put yeah. me. God, I ask that you will uh -huh. give unto me. Mm -hmm. A spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. This is an intimate conversation with God. I want you to open the eyes of my heart. Yeah. And I will know mm -hmm. the hope of your calling. That's what people need to know. That's really like the cry of your yes. spirit and your heart is you want to get past sense knowledge, feeling mm -hmm. knowledge, and you want to get into revelation knowledge because the truth is greater than the facts. That's right. And a lot of times people do a fact check, but they don't do a truth check. Truth check. <laughs> Reality. <laughs> All right. So here's the prayer. And this spirit of wisdom revelation, I believe, is a real thing that happens if you want it. And so you can see uh, that good. the scripture says that Moses laid his hands on Joshua and the spirit of wisdom came upon him. Mm -hmm. Think about that. So Moses, uh, I like to say it's not just uh, taught, it is caught. Mm -hmm. So the spirit of faith that Joshua had, think about when he commanded the sun to stand still, how did he know that that was available? And so Moses knew God, walked with God, wrote the first five books of the Bible. Now, let me ask you this. How Moses wrote Genesis chapter 1. How did he write Genesis chapter 1? Was he there? there? <laughs> I would say. How did he know? How did he know what happened in Genesis chapter 1? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There's that form and void and spirit of God moved face deep. And God said, and God said. And so Moses actually wrote Genesis from 
revelation knowledge. Mm -hmm. So what must have happened was Moses must have been somewhere in his tent, so to speak, right. and he must have been in the presence of God, and God said, let me show you something. I'm going to show you how the world was created. Moses said, hold it, i got to write this down. And so, so Genesis <laughs> was written by this spirit of wisdom and revelation. Actually, the whole Bible was written from this. So the spirit of wisdom and revelation that Moses laid his hands on Joshua and the spirit of wisdom came on him. And that affected Joshua's leadership. Right. That might be why Joshua was not afraid to go into the promised land. Is he knew something everybody else did not know. He was know. a giant killer. Yeah, that's where your faith comes from. Is you know something God. that other people don't know. So he was not afraid of the giant because he had revelation knowledge of God and the promises of God. So he took the land. You know, it seems like I'm thinking while you're talking about Joshua different ones who did great things in the Old Testament and the revelation of God that they did have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was limited. We had, we can have so much more now through the new birth, yeah. but David, mm -hmm. through revelation, his eyes were beautiful eyes, it says, mm -hmm. Samuel says, and they were yeah. eyes that saw God and how he loved yes. God inspired songs and, and Psalms 119 yes. is the longest chapter in the Bible and yet in that chapter David is talking about how he loves the word of God he loved God he loved his word and so he meditated so the whole chapter is about David's love for God's word, his principles, his precepts, God's way of doing things. He loved the word of God. Mm -hmm. He wasn't satisfied with anything else but the word. And you know what? He must have done that at home uh, because uh, his son, Solomon, he caught that hunger uh -huh. to know God and to have the wisdom mm -hmm. of God and the hunger for the word of God and, you know, uh, like you say, Proverbs, the first mm -hmm. few chapters, ah, but really yeah. David speaking to his son Solomon. Yeah. And Solomon had such a revelation of, you know, man's spirit is the candle of the Lord, lighting up. So his this is all being. wisdom. Yes. Proverbs wisdom coming from David, my son, to Solomon. Right. Uh, but some Bible scholars say actually that it was not only David talking to Solomon to try to help him and warn him and give him wisdom, but he said it was really inspired by God mm -hmm. so that Proverbs was written, mm -hmm. inspired by God for Jesus. So that when Jesus was born, the Bible says he laid aside his deity powers and Jesus grew in wisdom. So mm -hmm. Jesus read Psalms and Proverbs and Jesus grew in wisdom yeah. and he grew in stature and grew in favor. So he didn't do all that through his deity powers. Jesus studied the word. Matter of fact, his first sermon came from Isaiah chapter 61. <laughs> so Jesus literally yes. found himself in the book of Isaiah mm -hmm. And revelation hit him, and he said, that's who I am right there. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And that was his first sermon in Luke chapter 4. So Jesus saw him, like you said, in the Word, mm -hmm. and he then knew what to do. Yeah, so you don't have to go to Ancestry.com. You can actually find yourself mm -hmm. in the Word of God because you are included there in that Word, and you can find yourself in Christ through the blood and the death and resurrection of Christ, you see yourself there. And so uh, Jesus found himself, it says even in the, in the gospel mm -hmm. of, of uh, Matthew, he quotes how many times he's quoting from the scriptures, and then in Luke and John, and then it, then it goes on to Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, it said that all my days, my life is written in your book. Yes, yes. So the Holy Spirit wants us to read the book. Read and the book. You are in the book. Yeah. Your name is in the book. Yeah. And so Jesus in uh, Luke chapter 24. Yeah. I love Luke 24 oh. and verse 45 Mark. and verse 32. Both of us today <laughs> said, let's talk about. He, All right. We'll said, come back to Ephesians in just a second here. Go he to said, Luke let's 24. Talk about, I said, that's where I've got my book, my Bible open. And right so here. we both hit the same thing. Woo. So, 
uh, without talking to each other. And so Luke chapter 24, you're talking about revelation. And so it says that Jesus, after he's raised from the dead, and uh, says he walked with the disciples, and in verse um, let's see, verse 45, let's read verse 44, uh, Luke 24, verse 44, and it says, um, these are the words which Jesus spoke unto them, and it says this, while I was yet with you, he said, all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law and Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms and in, come on, concerning me, the Old Testament scriptures. He said, these things were written concerning me. It must be fulfilled. It's all written. It is written. It Your is life. Written. He said, my life, the plan of God for my life. It's written right there. And then it says, and then, verse 45, he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. He opened their ah, understanding. So, so then he opened their understanding. So Jesus showed them the scriptures, and when he opened their understanding, they went, wow, that's revelation knowledge. You know, last night the Holy Spirit said there's breakthroughs for the church. There's breakthroughs. We're having breakthroughs. And when, when the Holy Spirit said that, he added this, and I'm going to break through into your life. Mm -hmm. And so this... Revelation knowledge is yeah. a breakthrough. And, and, and yeah, knowing. go ahead. And one of Dad Hagen's prophecies, yeah. he said there will be such an acceleration mm -hmm. in your revelation and knowledge and learning. He said that it will seem like what took people 10, 20 years to learn, you'll be able to learn in the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Holy Spirit so can accelerate our ability to receive. So it says, Jesus opened their understanding. And then it says, and in verse 31, Luke 24, verse 31. Wow, all of this is great. Luke 24, <laughs> verse 31. It says, and their eyes were open and they knew him. You know what? They were walking along and talking about, you know, their death and resurrection of Jesus. I'm trying to figure it all out. And it's interesting that when you start talking about Jesus, he shows up. Yeah. They were just <laughs> he said, I'm coming. I'm on in on this conversation. And he is the spirit of revelation. You keep talking about Jesus, talking about the word. He shows up. He shows up. And two or three, he's there. And so Jesus started explaining them, starting with Moses. Yeah. He said, it's talking about me. He went all through the prophets. He said, this is me. He says, he interpreted the scriptures. So the Holy Spirit does that and he interprets a scripture mm -hmm. when we're hungry and thirsty and then he said well uh, they were about to go into the village in verse 28 and so jesus acted like he was going to go on you know there's points where jesus will say is that all you want i'll mm. go on wow. but they said no 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 we no want more. no we want more come come and eat with us <laughs> come and die more, with us he'll stick with you he'll stick with you and so they came in and uh, he's, they, he stayed there, and, and they prepared a meal. And when he took that bread, he broke it. And well, once he broke it, it was like their eyes were blinded. And once he broke that bread, they go, oh, it's you, it's Jesus. Jesus. It's further revelation. So it seems like, you know, you just yeah. keep hungering. Come further on. light, further, further light. revelation, increasing in the knowledge of God. Woo! And it says their hearts burned within them. All right, so that's a good point because we were good. going right there to verse verse 31. Their eyes were open. They knew him. Verse 32. This is Luke 24, verse 32. And it says, And they said to one another, mm. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And he opened to us the scriptures. So here's the point. True revelation knowledge yes. sets your heart on fire. So true revelation knowledge is beyond just an intellectual thing where you're mentally learning uh, scriptures or you're learning theology. Real revelation knowledge opened by Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Yes. Real revelation knowledge is like a fire. In other words, we're not talking about just gathering interesting Greek words or Hebrew words or mm. gathering theological or geographical or doctrinal things. All of those things are interesting, but we're talking about Jesus setting your heart on fire.
fire so that your whole life is on fire to follow Jesus and to hear his voice and to do what he wants you to do. And so you do that and you're going to be different, not only from other people, you'll be different from even other Christians because <laughs> your heart is on fire with revelation of who Christ is, who you are in Christ, and that revelation is not just gathering intellectual information. No. It is fire. So revelation knowledge is always fire. Luke <laughs> said, you know, he recorded the words, Jesus said, I've come to start a fire yeah. on the earth and I will not be silent until it is burning. That is Luke tw uh, 12, 49 12. 50. Yes. And so that fire, the fire. happened and it was in Jesus, and yeah. he set their hearts on fire. Yeah. And then he said, don't stop here. And on the day of Pentecost, Pentecost. And they got on fire. They got on fire, and that fire, <laughs> woo, it ignites the gift of fire. God. Fire, amen. Oh, it's such a zeal for God. And the fire of God, the fire of the word, yes. will burn up the chaff out yes. of your life, and it will ignite the gift and the call of God on the inside of you. So the revelation knowledge is more than just information. Information people hmm, they file that in some cabinet in their mind or their reasoning, but revelation of Jesus Christ, that he is Lord, that he is alive, and that you're in him and his life is in you and the spirit of God lives in you. That <laughs> kind of revelation whoo, changes the way you walk, the way you talk. Yes. Like I say, you cannot be on fire and act normal <laughs> when you're on fire. And so they said our hearts were on fire. And so when you receive the word appropriately, it should ignite your heart and your spirit with a fire that changes your thinking, changes your behavior, and that's the fire of the Holy Spirit and the fire of the word of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness, I'm hungry for that. All right, now here's one more scripture There's I want to throw in here. So <laughs> Psalms chapter 18, Psalms chapter 18. Oh no, I like that one. Uh -huh. Think about Psalm chapter 18, because the Psalmist David, in Psalms 18, he is surrounded by all kinds of enemies and all kinds of problems and troubles and people that, man, he constantly psalms. Uh, David talks about, boy, he has some people that set out to kill him and wreck him and ruin him. And so Psalms 18, the whole chapter's powerful, mm. but I just want to read verse 28. 28. Psalms 18, verse 28. We're going to read a couple more verses well, the, there. Well, the preface for that was David was really having a, having a struggle. Yeah, a challenge. A lot and, of enemies around him. Yeah. And he, he was calling out to God, and God heard him. Oh, yeah. And the way that he broke through to David was 28, wow. verse 28. Yeah, and so it says, <laughs> The Lord will light my candle. The Lord will light my candle. Whoa! The Lord will light my <laughs> candle. The Lord, my God, will bring light to my darkness. Wow. That means the entrance of his word gives light. And so in your darkness, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to escape. Mm -hmm. But he said, the Lord will light my candle. We know the scripture says that the spirit of man is the candle or the light or the fire. When they had light back in those days, they didn't have like electric light. They had a candle with a, with a flame. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord will set my spirit on fire. You just think about when you light a candle, you've got the fire, you've got the igniter, the match or whatever, and you put it to the wick. And it doesn't happen like that. You keep it at the wick until you can see. It starts burning. It's lit. And so he so says. So it's a process. Yeah. And Being so we're close. talking about revelation knowledge. Yeah. Lighten up your candle or your heart. An experience with the Holy Spirit. An experience with Jesus, not yeah. just gathering a bunch of information. No. This is not, the Bible's not even really just an education book. It's not a history book. No. The Bible is a revelation from God. But some people only receive it just like, well, they're just reading a story. No, there's revelation knowledge Amen. and keys that will unlock victory in your life. And so here's what he says. The Lord will light my candle. He will enlighten all my darkness. Look at verse 29. For by thee I have run through a troop and by my God, I have leaped over a wall. 
Wow, look at that. He said, uh, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust him. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? Verse 32, it is God that girds me with strength and makes my way perfect. Perfect. Hallelujah. He makes my feet like hinds feet. He sets me upon my high places. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. He said, Thou hast also given me the shield of salvation, and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Oh, yes. For thou hast enlarged my steps under me, and my feet did not slip. And then he said, I pursued my enemies, overtaken them. He said, I trampled them underneath my feet. Feet, he said, and they will not rise up again. He got victory. I would say he Instead got victory. Instead of running from his enemy, he got his fire. Yeah. And he turned and said, I'm coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> so the Lord, that's what the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God is. Yes. The Lord will light your candle, your spirit, with revelation of who he is and who you are in him. And he says, when the Lord lights my candle, he said, I can run through the troop. I can jump over the wall. So to me, the wall means like barriers yeah. are limitations right. in your life. And so you've been limited by those walls and surrounded by different kinds of enemies, which could be thoughts and imaginations and feelings and all kinds of enemy strategies of the devil. He said, and so when the Lord lights my candle, then I can run through that truth. Nothing could stop me, and I will jump the wall that has limited my life. I'll break that barrier through revelation. Well, I like that. You know, that verse had just has always impacted me since, you know, in the 80s when I found it. And um, for a personal testimony, my giant, my enemies at that time was I just was sick all the time. I had asthma, mm -hmm. and that became my identity. Hmm. And uh, the Lord sent his word to heal me. I began to meditate on the scriptures I'm healing, you know. And I took that until one day the Lord lit my candle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was when. The word, the, the light. The Holy Spirit, yeah. He said, what are you going to do with that? He said, why don't you get up and resist the devil with it? Yeah. You know. Mm. And so I saw myself in this situation where I'm going to run through the troop and leap the wall because yeah. I have the spirit of revelation that Christ redeemed mm. me from that. It does not belong to me. It's not my identity. Yeah. I'm going to turn and I'm going to say something with my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Hallelujah. And that day. And the devil woo, ran from you. He ran from me and my enemies <laughs> fell at my feet. Instead of you being afraid of him. <laughs> I now stomped him. You chased him down, stomped <laughs> him. And so the, the Lord will light my candle. So he's talking about this spirit of wisdom and revelation in Ephesians 1, 17. Now we're going to finish this prayer and keep going on uh, tomorrow and the next day, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. We're going to go over the Ephesians 1 prayer. We got stopped on that. For in Christ are <laughs> hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. knowledge. In other words, stored up for us and God grants us access Hallelujah. that I like to say that God's kingdom system of revelation knowledge has never been hacked. In other words, no man has been able to break into it. If you got into God's system of revelation knowledge, <laughs> he granted you access. Once you're granted access and you know the access code, which is the blood of Jesus blood. and who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. Once you know that access code, you can go into the revelation of the word and download holy information, revelation from God and let the fire of God light your candle. Wow, I encourage you to pray the Ephesians 1 prayer every single day. Verse 17 through 23, this book called Revolutionary Revelation is free. We've got two different covers on it. We'll send you this book. It happens to be my favorite book <laughs> that me and you wrote together. And so this book will come absolutely free. We'll send you the Ephesians card free that has the Ephesians prayers on it. You can carry it in your Bible. You've got to get this book. It is absolutely free. So just take a moment, go to our website. 
website, markhankins.org. Just go to markhankins.org and say, I want the free book on revolutionary revelation on the Ephesians 1 prayer and Ephesians 3 prayer. I got to get that book. You got to have it. It's free. And while you're there, you can go into the, the CD messages and you can download messages called I think Revolutionary Revelation. We have a set of CDs. So you can download the messages. And so we encourage you to go get your free book. Our office, we've had to hire new people, more people, just because... Uh, so many orders are just we just don't have, mm-hmm. have, uh, have enough people just to manage it so we've just hired some new people just to get you the word and the word is working mightily so you know, get during, the books during all this pandemic you know everybody's closed in and isolated whatever you know make progress in the spirit you might not be active naturally mm. but get your word out get the bible out let's just go forward I believe for this time some giant killers are being raised. Yes. And so also right there uh, on Facebook Live, there is a place where you can uh, text to give. In other words, your giving, your partnership helps us preach the gospel. The Apostle Paul said to the Philippians, thank you for being my partner. He said, you gave once and you gave again. He said, and, it, and he said, it's come to your account, the preaching of the gospel. And he said, and my God shall supply all oh, your Lord. need according to his riches in glory. In other words, show me who you're a partner with and I'll show you your future. In other words, when you're a partner with a ministry that's feeding you the word of God and in your church being a blessing to your church and your pastor being a blessing to other ministries that are bringing you revelation knowledge, Paul said, in Galatians 6, 6, when you receive the word, share all good things. In other words, you just say, thank you for that word. I'm going to give. And I believe the moment you give, something supernatural happens because now your heart is connected and the word goes from information to revelation because you're saying, God, thank you for that word. And I want somebody else to get the word. Somebody else so to I'm get I'm going to give so the word can yeah. grow and multiply. And we're literally yeah. sending uh, the book and these other books. Mm-hmm. into many different countries yeah. all over the world. And so yeah. your partnership you enables us to do that. country, you can get, download the PDF yes, file. You, yeah. like that. And we right. have our books in 30 different languages <laughs> working right now. Thank we just God. did a live stream with Brazil and they were presenting four of our books. And so uh, the word is working mightily. You know what? I have a testimony today for Mark Hankins ministry. Our internet is set up in what we call the red barn. <laughs> we, <laughs> we have our ministry offices in And two barns. big barns. They're barns. <laughs> My barns are filled with plenty. Filled with plenty. <laughs> and so the red barn is what we are going to use to distribute our new, the, and our new, a new uh, TV, studio. TV studio. And so we're on the way. And so praise God. Thank yeah. you for partnering with us with that. And your partner, you you help us preach the gospel all over the world. Thank you so much. And whether you feel like you're giving a lot or you say, well, it's just a little bit I can give. Everything adds up, but also God is not unrighteous to forget your generosity and your giving because the light, the gospel of Christ is literally being broadcast into many nations, not only through Facebook and Instagram and uh, YouTube, but also we're on uh, uh, Golden Eagle Broadcasting, uh, which is on Direct TV every day, Monday through Friday. We're on Victory Television Network, which is Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee area. Area, Monday through Friday, we're on Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth and Gloria Copeland Victory Network, Kenneth Copeland Ministries, Monday through Friday, and God bless Kenneth and Gloria Amen. Copeland because they give us the time free. And uh, we are partners with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. We're partners with Rama, with uh, Dad and Mom Hagen are in heaven. But now, uh, Kenneth and Lynette, uh, Ken and Lynette Hagen, mm-hmm. Pastor Hagen, Rama, we're partners every month with them. The Lord told me one time, says, be the kind of partner you want. And so I'm a faithful partner, <laughs> generous partner yeah. with those ministries. And the God's given us that kind of, those kind of partners in our ministry. Thank you so much. We have the best partners, I'm telling you. They're amazing. Oh, God bless you. And bless. Thank you so much. If you come up to me at a meeting, you say, I'm a monthly partner. You say, I'm a partner. So even if you're just giving one time, say, I want to give something to help the word multiply. When you come and tell us, I'm a partner. Now, we just <laughs> hug you right off and say, thank you. So no social distancing. So uh, when we see you're a partner, we are thankful because Paul said, it is your partnership in Philippians chapter four. You gave and you gave again. 
and now the gospel is being preached and it is set to the credit of just, your account. Why don't you speak a blessing over the partners? Yes, so the Lord bless you abundantly. He will multiply your seed sown, yeah. make all grace abound towards you because you're partnering together with the greatest information, Thank which we call you. revelation. The greatest, this information will change a nation, change a family, change an individual, and you're a partner helping the word to grow and multiply. So praise God. God bless you abundantly. And I encourage you, go to markhankins.org. You can actually give that way. Well, you can give, uh, uh, the address will come up and you can mail a check, mail an offering if you want to do that. Uh, listen, if you can't give anything, it does not matter. You get a free book. You just go ahead and go to the website <laughs> and get the free right. book. Well, you read that book and you'll give something one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> and so God will bless you and keep you, make his countenance shine upon you and the favor of God upon your life. And uh, Monday through Friday, 10 o'clock every morning, get back on here because we got a lot more to say about Ephesians 1, the spirit well, of wisdom. Woo, <laughs> I'm telling you, on fire. And so we are, you can tell we're enjoying this about as much as you are. We're having a blast. And so God bless you abundantly. Jesus is, is Lord. Lord.